Welcome to Castlevania Lords of Shadow, everyone! It is time to get back to the Castlevania series, and why not with the highly controversial Lords of Shadow games? It has been a while since I have played this one. I am pretty excited, because unlike a lot of people, I kind of enjoy the first Lords of Shadow game here. Of course, I have to adjust the brightness. You know what, game? I'm not gonna fall for your tricks this time. I'm gonna make it a little bit more lighter than I probably need to be. But here we go. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this, kind of seeing how this is going to pan out. God, what has it been? Like a decade after the release of this game? Wow, kind of really takes me back. Weird getting nostalgic for Lords of Shadow of all things. Usually I get nostalgic for like Symphony of the Night or whatever, but... Okay, do I want to play this on normal? Because this game, it can be pretty ball-crunching difficult. I remember... I believe I beat this on Warrior the first time I played, so even though I might regret it, here we go. A storm is coming. Mankind faces ruin and despair. The world is changing, yet hope remains in the hearts of the people. We go about our daily lives never knowing the forces that can change our destinies forever. We are oblivious, ignorant like sheep to the slaughter. This night, in the year of our Lord 1047, marks the beginning of our journey together. A journey into darkness into madness. I watch him from the shadows. Is he the one? He has come far already, but he will be tested, tested to the very limits of human endurance and beyond. This night he rides looking for the old gods, armed with an amulet that has led him here. Tonight he will begin his journey into oblivion. And that's Patrick Stewart with the narration, the joining of two of my favorite things in the world, Star Trek and Castlevania. How could I not be excited? Of course, this is a reboot of the Castlevania series into a 3D beat-em-up form. Well, pretty much. I like how it begins in the year 1047. I believe that's when Lament of Innocence took place as well. Got a nice little callback to the original timeline there. But here we go. All right. A reimagining, a reboot, a restart. The struggle for supremacy is eternal. Inevitable. Victory is the natural objective of every creature on this world. They will kill and die for their kind to dominate. Some call this eternal struggle equilibrium, the balance between light and darkness. These are dark times, times without hope. Men of faith claim that this is a test from God to strengthen our spirit. Perhaps this is true, or perhaps it is simply a pious lie. If it is true, darkness has come to engulf once proud humanity, and we are witnessing the end of man. Okay, and how do I play this? I've completely forgotten. It is the square button for direct attacks, triangle for area, X to jump, and combine these to unleash deadly moves. More like I'll just button mash until I win! Although I don't think I can do that on this difficulty. On easy, sure, but uh, on this one, probably not. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get back into my Bayonetta mode of thought right here. Yeah, it is very similar to Bayonetta. In fact, this is the first type of these games that I ever really played. You know, these Arena 3D 
uh, combo based beat em up type of games. This is a health font, use it to restore your health, you can interact with anything that glows like this, and is my controller really low at the beginning of the playthrough? You gotta be kidding me! I swear this is a professional operation. Okay, a bit of a rocky start here, but okay, where was I? Oh yeah, we can regain our health by sitting right here, or standing right here, and just pressing the R2 button, although our health isn't very high. Like, halfway full, are you kidding me? And these aren't vampires! This isn't Castlevania, that's a were-man! Oh, that's kind of redundant. Where man Hand man Werewolf, that's what it is at the very least. Or lichens, I believe they're called here. Ooh. So we have the ever-so-present sub-weapons. And we throw the daggers by pressing the circle button. So a really cool thing about this game is that certain sub-weapons are super effective against certain enemy types. Like the lichens here, of course, they're going to be weak to these silver daggers. Boom. And the sub-weapons tend to be very, very powerful in this game, so you don't want to waste them. Of course, I'm going to use them right now, just because I think the game wants me to, but... So yeah, whenever you come across the lichens, just go ahead and use those silver daggers if you got them. I'm going to take that hit already, huh? Ow! What is the dodge button exactly? I need to know what that is. I believe the dodge button is... Maybe I should just press a bunch of things. Not that. Do I not have a dodge button yet? Oh, grab the enemy with R2. I forgot this was a thing. Oh yeah, by the way, this is a rated M for mature game. There's a lot of mature content here. If you don't want to see that, look away, guys. This is Castlevania, and it's bloody prime. Although I would make the case that's not really what makes Castlevania great in a lot of ways. But hey, it's here. How much I can do about it. When you kill an enemy, you gain experience points. Oh, so we have a few RPG elements here from Symphony of the Night. Although I guess technically it came here first in Castlevania 2. I know. Jeez. Yeah, so far so good. I think I'm holding my own for the most part. Of course, we have some villagers here helping us out, so... That can be the most difficult thing in the world. No, seriously, what's the dodge? I forgot what the dodge is. Is it circle? Maybe I don't have the dodge yet. I mean, they're pretty good about easing the mechanics into us, you know, so... Although I should probably be using my combos with my area attacks more, but... Oh yeah, we get all of our advanced moves and combos in here that we can use. Not interested. Oh, wait, I gotta freaking purchase it, don't I? That's right, hold up. Let's see, do I go here? No, that's how- that's my light medallions. I t you know what? We'll deal with this later. <laughs> Again, swear this is a professional operation. Although for me, I have, uh, not played this game in a very long time, like I said, so, you know, we'll get to the skills when we get to the skills. Okay, let's go ahead and try putting in some- aha! Some wide range attacks with that. That looks pretty cool. We fight with a freaking cross, too. That's pretty awesome. The combat cross, as it's called. Always a bigger like it. Oh, no! Get, get off me! Quick time events really win! This is an early 2010s game, after all. Of course, we are going to have... Oh, block! Okay. So that's how we do it. Of course, I hate blocking in these games. I much prefer dodging. But uh, yeah, early 2010s game, of course, we're going to have quick time events. Okay, so I do- okay. I, well, I did not realize that, uh, there we go, that's how I do my dodge roll. That that was on a time limit, but, okay, yeah, this feels a lot better already. Ooh, I'm like it. Oh, man. One thing I love about this game, guys, I'm not gonna say I love the game in its entirety. Ooh, even a, uh, uh, a quick recover right there, too. Let's go ahead and get some health while we're over here. There we go. Because I wasn't doing very well, but the villagers are a little distracted us a bit. I'm not going to say I love the game in its entirety, or at least I remember not loving it in its entirety, but one thing I cannot, like, praise enough is the soundtrack in this game. Holy crap. This game is something else with the music. Can you guys hear this? Now that is just badass, I gotta say. Is that a wooden stake? It is indeed. And that should do it. Oh. 
Who are you? I am Gabriel. I have traveled here seeking the Guardian of the Lake. You are from the Order? They sent you? How do I find him? He... He will find you. In the forest. And there we go, level complete! Nice! Okay, maybe I should go to the skills page and see what we actually have right here. Um, I think it's gonna be under... Yeah, advanced moves here. I think all we have right now is the guillotine. Let's go ahead and get that. So while we're in the air, go ahead and hold the square button and we'll do a nice little mid-air combo like that. And given the difficulty that I'm on, I think I'm gonna have to use at least a few of these in order to succeed. There is one that I remember really liking a lot. Was it the spinning chain? Oh, it might be. But I only have 70 of these things right now. Souls? I don't know, this isn't Dark Souls, I can't say that. I don't know what they are. They're the thing that we use to get the more skills. Whatever. And here we go, so level 1 was what we were just in. This is level 2, the world map. You can revisit previous levels. There we go. So Besieged Village was the first level, which was what I was trying to say right there. I think that that was supposed to be like on the edge of civilization, so now we're just adventuring out into the wilderness, so here we go. I follow him into the old forest, watching him from afar. He is strong indeed. The one god comes to drive out the many, but here, in this place, god's influence is thin and threadbare. The old gods still hold sway here. Few venture this far into the wood. He is disturbed by dreams, dreams that gnaw at his very soul. He will rest for the night, but rest will not come easy. The battle has left him weakened, but he knows the dream will return, and though he fears nothing on this earth, yet his nightmares sap the strength within him and leave a cold grip on his heart. Tomorrow he will use the old hunting path. Long has it been in disuse, but for now he dreams. What motivates a man to confront the challenges that most of us would run from? Condemning him to solitude, exposing him to defeat and death. The answer is love, a force so powerful that all reason becomes blind to it, blind to all things, even the truth. Loss of love can make a man desperate, desperate enough to do anything to bury the truth, to hide from its pain. Oh, great, so we open up with a writing segment, huh? Not the best introduction to the game. I haven't even mastered the core mechanics yet, but hey, this is what we got. Press the square button to attack the wargs, the triangle button to attack the lycanthrope riders. Both attacks can be aimed left or right with the left stick, and we can dodge. Okay. Alright, looks good to me. Here we go. Again, this game's pretty this game's pretty hard as balls, guys. This isn't gonna be uh this is gonna be a walk in the park. So we can do that. 
Okay, so it looks like the triangle attack is going to be best when I'm actually surrounded. Ow. I'm gonna have to do this just to hang on. Okay. Okay, there we go. Or maybe I should just focus on taking out the steeds. Yeah, it's hard to do this whenever there are more than one. To jump under the water, ooh. That sounds cool. And now taking out the last one should be fine. Oh yeah, whenever they glow, that's when I have to use R2. If it glows, press R2. It's slowly coming back to me. Nice one, Gabriel. Oh, by the way, this is Gabriel Belmont, yeah. That's a name we haven't heard in the original Castlevania timeline. Gabriel is a completely new guy created for the Lords of Shadow reboot. You younger guys might recognize him as a spirit in Smash Bros. Ultimate of all things. Was not expecting that, I tell you what, but hey, I wasn't complaining whenever I saw it. Yeah, it's pretty cute using the block and whatnot, but we all know I'm gonna be dodging the vast majority of the time. Okay, what do we have here? A skeleton man. Ooh, so it's a move. Immediately after a synchronized block, you can unleash a devastating direct counterattack. Didn't I just do that? I believe I did, actually. That's fine, though. With the little guys, I think we can't just, like, button mash our regular attack. When you just got one little guy around here, it's not that big of a deal. It's when you start getting ganged up on, which is gonna be the big deal. And if you see an enemy, yeah, it's kinda to your benefit to take it down, because like I said, or like we saw earlier, uh, there is an experience system in here, so... I don't think it's, it's like, a critically important thing, you know, but it's something. It, it's very similar to Symphony of the Night in that manner. Alright, so another riding segment. Let's see if I can do better this time. Let's just focus on one of the sides. Do that. Maybe like three and then we dodge? Maybe I should do that. Well, hey, if I can take him out that way, I'm not complaining. Now, let's do the same thing. Attacking the big guy seems to be the way to go. Boy, you got style, Gabe, I gotta say. And now the battle continues on foot. Alright, bigger guy, we're gonna have to watch out for this one. I forget, is there a lock-on function in this one? I would hope so. I don't remember if there is, though. So I'm gonna have to start using these wide attacks as cloud control, for sure. There we go, now it's coming back to me how I should use this. Oh, yeah, man. That, that pretty basic, uh, long-range combo is pretty devastating. Alright, might want to start using the knives on the big one here. <laughs> he is wrecking me up. Oh god, did he just dodge me? He sure did. Yeah, these ones are a bit more intelligent, I guess. Okay. I got plenty of them, though, so... Oh wait, don't disappear on me! Okay, let's take this one down. Yeah, no use in, uh, having the sub-weapons if I'm not gonna actually use them, so... Not a whole lot of combos at the moment. Maybe I should try that jumping combo. Yeah, that seemed to do a lot of damage, it's just this is, <laughs> is really, uh... Got him wrecking me right now. Okay, yeah, come on! There we go, that worked a little bit better. Oh yeah, that was nice and strong. Looks like his mouth does glow a bit whenever he's about to come in and try to attack me though, so... Oh wow, I really should've healed during that, huh? I was fully intending on healing after I took the big guy down, but uh... Well, that's my mistake now, isn't it? Yeah, this game's got style. You can say it's derivative style, and in some ways uh, I suppose it is, but hey, it's style nonetheless. Now 
man, this music really makes you feel like you're setting out on a super epic quest, you know? It's just, it's pretty awesome. Looks like I can get some skills here. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to these advanced moves. What do we got? How about we go for the spinning chain? Is this the one I like so much? Oh, just hold the triangle button in the air. Okay, that's pretty cool. Go ahead and buy that one. Again, we can buy these at any time. I don't necessarily have to do them right now. Chain beer sounds pretty cool too. Of course, I only have 245, so I'm gonna save up for the better ones. Ooh, and we got a magic gem out of that too. The green ones are what's going to uh, make our health bar get bigger, so kind of important, as you can imagine. But here we go, chapter three, the dead bog.